Greetings and welcome back to Mavanwinir Studio, here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. If you're new here, my name is Harriet, and today's video is a collaboration with a fellow artist and YouTuber, Molly, over at Miss Molly's Art. Molly requested this collaboration a few months back with the idea that we mail each other the collaboration artwork and some art supplies to create the piece with. So here it is. Molly sent me this pretty pink box all the way to Ireland from Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm so excited to see what she sent me. I'm opening the box here. It's got some packaging materials in the top. It's good recycled magazines. She sent me a small A5 sketchbook. There's some stuff inside it. Okay, this must be the artwork. A beautiful mandala. It looks half done in pencil and also with marker pen. Oh, and there's a letter. I'll read that in a bit. And, oh, it says here in the book, she says, Hello there, I hope you like the supplies I got you. I'm so excited to see what you come up with. You can do anything you like. I hope you like this. Thank you for doing this collab with me. Miss Molly Arts, have fun. The rest of the sketchbook is for filling up and there's some how to draw tips and tricks in the front. It feels like quite nice paper and the size is super portable for bringing out and about. Significantly, this beautiful mandala for our collaboration. And oh look, she swatched out the colours that she used. That's very thoughtful and helpful. If I wanted to find those colours and pick up where she left off, I like this a lot, I can work with this. It's also on an A4 sheet, which means it will fit in my scanner. Ooh, what's this? Scented felt pens, and they've got a lovely paisley design on them. I love paisley, it's one of my favourite patterns. It says, enriched with essential oils, colour scents, vivid colour. They look really nice. This is metallic pencils and there are six colours there. And we have some neon fluorescent gel pens and there are six colours here. So those are very interesting. UV art is one of my long time passions. And what's this squishy? It's a super kawaii little popcorn character and he's super adorable. It seems to be a black ballpoint pen. Oh, he's really cute. So here we are. I've got some interesting supplies to get on with. And there's also a letter here. I'm not sure if I'm to read it online. It's got one of Molly's quirky character drawings on it. So just looking at what we've got now. We've got the UV or fluorescent gel pens, the cute squishy popcorn ballpoint pen, the metallic pencils and the scented felt-it pens, the A3 sketchbook and Molly's beautiful mandala artwork that's done half in coloured marker and with white gel pen and the other half is just line work in pencil. So straight away, I envision creating a much larger composition with this and printing it out as a starting place for my traditional art using the supplies here. I'm in Photoshop now and I scanned Molly's mandala and adjusted the lighting and contrast to remove any of the fold lines that the scanner picked up from the paper. Then I started by tilting the image with the transformation tool. A slight rotation just to straighten up the center point so I can select half of the image which I intend to mirror. This is done by selecting half of the image which I copy and pasted into a new blank page, enlarging it there. Part of the middle of the mandala was missing so I used the color picker tool just to pick out the colors Molly used and then I used the filler tool to fill them back in. Once I had half of the mandala complete, I duplicated the layer and flipped it horizontally to mirror it, placing the two pieces together. 
I noticed at the top of the mandala the two top petals didn't quite meet in an aesthetic way, so I used the selection tool just to select one of the petals from another part of the mandala, which I then copied and pasted, closing the gap, keeping that nice, circular illusion of symmetry intrinsic of mandalas. Once that was done, I put it to one side and opened another blank document. Going back to Molly's scanned artwork and using the selection tool, I copied a quarter piece of the pencil side of the mandala and pasted it into my blank sheet. I upped the contrast on this line work to make it much darker and more defined. Next, I did the same process again, duplicating the layer, flipping it to mirror it, and merging those two layers together and repeating but this time, I mirrored it vertically, which created a four-part symmetrical mandala from the one-quarter piece of Molly's pencils drawing. I then merged all the layers together and used the transform tool to pinch the mandala down into a more circular geometric shape. I then removed the background with the magic eraser tool and shrank the mandala to repeat it three times in a row. It took me a little bit of time to get this exactly right. I did this by centering one of the mandalas and then allowing the two side pieces to go off the page. I like that about it, that they're going off the page. I think it gives the illusion of the infinite expansion of the universe. I mean, mandalas are often used to represent organization and structure of cosmic design, found abundantly in nature. They are structures of cells and our world and our universe. Mandalas are often used to assist meditation as a transformation tool, making order out of disorder. As a circle, it's widely considered a symbol of wholeness, continuity, interdependence, community, radiance, abundance, harmony, and the circle of life. The radiant oneness with life itself as mirrored in the consciousness and the cosmic design. Once I had the three mandalas in a straight line, I merged those three layers together and duplicated the layers and arranged the lines to create a repetitive pattern which filled the whole picture plane. I then coloured my background layer black and brought Molly's colourful mandala back into the piece. I added a thin black border to frame it. Next, I wanted to create a white space on the composition where I could draw my character standing in the foreground. I did this by creating a new blank white layer and drew an oval frame using the round selection tool to create a well-positioned oval shape that was cut off at the bottom of the page so it almost appeared like a pointed arch. I inversed the selection and discarded the space outside of this shape and then brought my white arch layer up as the top layer and adjusted the transparency down so you could see some of the pattern background coming softly through the shape. I then used the Gaussian blur tool to soften the shape's edges so it appeared to be dissolving into the background. I then went back in with the brush tool and added a little non-transparent white onto the arch shape to get a nice white for me to do my character on. Lastly, I added a haze of pink across the top of the background layer, which I think is nice. It's like light coming from above and just gives a little bit of spatial depth. And here it is, ready to send to my printer. I'm printing this on an A3 sheet of 300 GSM Fabriano watercolour paper. It will be a new process using some of these pens that Molly has sent me, so I don't know how they're going to perform with the paper, but we'll find out. Starting the sketch, I used a mechanical pencil and my Derwent electrical eraser. I got this quite recently and wanted to play with it. The eraser point spins and makes precise erasing super effortless. I'm not using any of the supplies Molly sent me just yet. Here I'm just sketching out my character and she's quite pixie-like. I've added a lot of cosmic floating orbs around her with my circle stencil. I'm inking the drawing now and I'm using a ballpoint pen with the happy popcorn squishy on top. I don't usually use a ballpoint pen to draw with, I haven't done this in years. I found the pen a little bit skinny to hold but it was okay. I was surprised how nice the line work actually was, discovering that if you press down harder the line gets thicker and if you just use a light quick movement you get fine soft lines. So there's a certain amount of gradients that you can get with a ballpoint pen that you can't really get with, say, a micron. I was quite pleased with it and I felt I got some surprisingly good effects with this pen. Like I said, it was a little bit skinny to hold at first and with the amount of pressure I found myself making on the watercolour paper, I felt it in my wrist. 
and there were times when it helped to squeeze the squishy popcorn head at the top of the pen and that really soothed my aching hand. I just had to get used to using it. I found myself going over the lines a couple of times, colouring back over to try and get the definition I wanted for my drawing, but after a while it was fine. I used a ruler to do some shading, creating lots of vertical lines close together, and I quite like the effect of that. My wide-eyed character has a sweetness to her that I quite like. Once I'd done the line work with the ballpoint pen, I erased the pencil lines, and then it was time to consider the other supplies. So I used the sketchbook Molly sent me to swatch out the different colours, starting with the metallic pencils. There were some interesting shades and a subtle sheen. And with the scented pen, one is green and it smells like apple, and the red one smells like strawberries, or maybe cherries. The neon gel pens were actually very smooth and vibrant. I have a bit of a passion for UV painting and I've done a lot in my day, very big UV murals, so I haven't done a lot of intricate small things with UV materials or fluorescent pigments, so these gel pens are of some interest to me. I do have a black light in my studio so we can have a look at what this piece looks like in the UV light when the piece is finished, so I'll add that footage at the end of the video. Introducing colour, I started with the metallic pencils and I did get some nice effects. I put the colour down and then I used an eraser to soften it because I felt like the pale tinted colour felt better than using a burnishing effect with them, especially on the textured watercolour paper. I think these pencils perhaps would be more interesting used on black paper. They might really pop on a darker surface. Maybe I could have done it on the black printed background but I didn't think of that while I was doing the piece. After a short time, I decided to stick with the neon gel pens and I did some Zentangle pattern designs in part of her skirt, a kind of pink psychedelic paisley doodle. I also added some pink highlights on her shoulders and made kind of a mesh design on her arms of the dress. I did this with a ruler which made quite a neat effect. I used neon blue to colour her hair and added the neon orange highlights to her face. I then introduced a blending pen and this is just a pro marker blender used for alcohol markers. Here I used it to blend the gel pens and it actually worked. Maybe you could just perhaps use water and a brush for this. I don't particularly think gel pens are alcohol based but the blending tool definitely worked here for softening the edges of the gel pen. Maybe it's because it's just damp. But anyway, I carried on with that just using the blender to soften some of the marks on the gel pen and make some gradients there. Once I'd done the character, she was predominantly blues and purples. I also used an orange metallic pencil to add some additional tanned colour on her skin. I used it quite light as I'd already added highlights to the skin with the neon orange gel pen. Next I addressed the black and white mandalas. I decided to use the gel pens to selectively colour some aspects of the mandalas. This actually took quite a while to do because they were quite detailed and intricate. I didn't colour too much of them, just highlighted a few of the petals and again used the blending tool to soften the edges into that Gaussian blur haze around my character's head. And that was a very good effect. I continued filling these small details on each of the background mandalas outlined some of the inner edges with the neon line work. This is my third YouTube collaboration and my first with Molly. Molly really stood out to me because of her enduring enthusiasm. She has been very friendly to me from the get-go, leaving me sweet encouraging comments on a lot of my videos and with me just starting out with my channel in October last year, I think maybe she started around the same time as me? Molly is a young emerging artist based in Nebraska, Omaha, which is in the United States. She's currently 19 years old and has a unique style which I can see developing and she's finding her way with it. I admire her perseverance. I wish when I was 19 I had the foresight to go and start a YouTube channel. At her age, I really think it's forward thinking of her to do growing a audience and also growing with them as an artist. I think she already has a distinctive quirky style of doodling. It reminds me a little of the cartoonist Jim Jenkins. He was the man who created the Nickelodeon's Doug in the 1990s. It has a really fun, friendly, gregarious style. She does a lot of drawings that are quite motif-like of colourful everyday objects and fun street scenes which could have jumped out of a children's picture book. 
Her channel is very diverse alongside her drawing videos. She also does reviews for different art materials and some bullet journal spreads and fun vlogs about organizing her desk and art materials. I think she's such a sweetheart and I really haven't been on YouTube very long, but I see her being very active in my community or the community that I perceive in my little corner of the immense sea that is YouTube. She's been very sweet and supportive, which means a lot to me. Everyone who I connect with here, I feel really happy to share this art journey with you all and getting to see what you're all making makes all the difference, so thank you so dearly. I asked Molly what inspired her to start a YouTube channel and she said that she was inspired by the other artists on YouTube. So as an artist making work and videos on YouTube, you are also inspiring people not only to make art but perhaps also to start a channel and connect with a community which is very positive. It can be a lot of work and commitment, but Molly has been very consistent posting videos on her channel each week. She said her current aspiration is to hit 1000 subscribers, so I will leave a link below the video to Molly's channel. If you haven't already subscribed, you should definitely go and check her out and leave some love and support and help her reach her goal. And also to check out her part of the collaboration video. I know she's already posted a part one of the video, which is a unboxing video of the package I sent her with the materials alongside some of my arts and crafts that I also sent her. I'm very curious to see what she does with the materials I sent. I included a brown craft paper sketchbook and a patterned scrapbooking paper pad. Material wise I sent her some Sculpey clay and mostly charcoal and pastel related items like erasers, putty rubbers and a tin of Derwent tinted charcoal. So I'm very interested to see what she makes with it. I think the things I sent her have quite natural tones which I think in that way you get challenged with the things that other people send you. I think a lot of Molly's art has been very colourful and vibrant. I thought there was something very earthy about using natural materials like charcoal and all the tinted charcoal I sent her had lots of warm natural tones. So I think it might be something different than what her usual go-to drawing materials are. For this collaboration, I corresponded with Molly via Instagram and when she asked could we send each other an art box, she asked me what supplies I would like and I said surprise me and I would surprise her too. For me, the surprise was the biggest part of the fun. From using these materials Molly sent me, I'm using mainly the fluorescent gel pens for colouring. I'm surprised how flat the colour goes down. Even though you are colouring with a fine gel tip rollerball, all the lines just bleed so evenly that you can't even see the line work. It just gels together seamlessly, which I really love the vibrant flat hopping colour that's happening with these gel pens. The scented markers are almost exactly like the Papermate flare felt tips, which I use a lot of the time in my bullet journal. Mmm, I'm happy to have a strawberry smelling one. I think they're really great for writing, especially if you want to write titles. I also like the paisley design on them. I felt like I did cheat a little bit. I used a few things that Molly did not send me on my piece after I printed it, of course. And these were my mechanical pencil, my electric eraser, the Pro Marker blending pen. I also used a black alcohol marker to outline the edge of the mandala. I used a little bit of invisible UV felt tip pen, which you can't see this ink at all except when you put it in the black light. So it's completely invisible. I just wanted to introduce some invisible blue which is kind of like the UV equivalent of white. It's not the same as UV blue, it's much brighter. I use it just to add some dimension to her eye whites and her skin tone. You can't see it when you're in the normal light which I love about it. It's so magic and comes to life when you have the black light on. I would like to say a huge thank you to Molly for doing this collab with me and sending me this exciting box of art supplies alongside her beautiful mandala art. Good luck with your art channel, Molly. I do hope you hit your goal soon. I can see she's well on her way there. We're coming to the end of my time naps now and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Do have an inspiring week and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Bye bye.